This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. I'm Marley Oxenome from Pentester Academy TV, and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. Today, I will be speaking with the company Sentinel One. I'm sitting down right now with Chris Bates, who's going to show us a demo of the platform. Take it away. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm going to demonstrate the uh, Sentinel One Endpoint Protection Platform. We're basically going to do some pre-execution prevention using both reputation and machine learning. Okay. Then we're going to do some ransomware. We're going to crypto lock a box. Then we're going to un we're going to recover it using the Sentinel One platform. And then finally, we're going to show you how DeepViz can solve some very interesting issues with its encrypted visibility. Sounds so, good. Okay. First thing is, I have two files over here that I downloaded from VirusTotal. One, one is basically a known hash. Mm -hmm. The other one is the exact same file, but we've modified the hash in a different way. So it's kind of like morphing. Think of it as polymorphic malware. Okay. So as you can see, we've detected both threats. They've disappeared. If we over in the console, I can now see them. So if I go and analyze and look at the details of the threats, what we're going to see really quick is the first one is caught because of known reputation. So mm -hmm. it's a known bad hash. The reason we use that is it's the least expensive way to catch malware. Okay. So from a system resource standpoint, from every other standpoint, it's the least taxing on the system. So if we can eliminate the threat just by using the le least taxing, we do that. Okay. So as you can see, we caught that one. Next we're going to look at is one that is pretty much simulates like a zero day or something that is unknown. Okay. So as you can see, it wasn't caught by reputation. It was caught by our machine learning engine or our DFI engine. But what we do show you is kind of Again, the, the uh, indicators, why did we think that it was malicious? Mm. So the main problem with like machine learning is, as an example, it's a mathematical algorithm that may have 31,000 variables, and mm -hmm. the total sum of the variables will come up with a score, and that score is what predicts it's malicious or not. Mm -hmm. And most people are like, well, why did it do that? And it's really hard to explain in detail, but what we have done is taken like the big buckets that kind of simulate the different parts of the model mm -hmm. and summed up what scored really high. So in this case, you can see like abnormalities, mm -hmm. hiding in stealth, it was packed. So ah, these give indicators okay. of why we thought that file was malicious. So the analyst has a little bit more information to go on. Okay, cool. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crypto lock my box. Um, okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this over to uh, detect only mode. So this is kind of like a traditional EDR tool. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you you have a problem, but I'm going to leave it up to you to figure out what to do with the problem, okay. right? The reason I'm doing that is because, frankly, it's impossible to get ransomware past us. So mm -hmm. for the demo, nice. I'm putting it in here. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to give it a few minutes, a minute to pick up the policy. Mm -hmm. And what happens is basically the agents can check into the server, find out it's changed its policy, and then we're going to run the file. So in here you'll see I have a bunch of my little minion yep. dudes. Really cool. So I'm going to open up a, an Excel document. This Excel document is going to simulate something like a phishing attack. Okay. Right. So I've sent you a document. I'm going to try to get you. I'm enticing you to open the document. Mm -hmm. In this case, it looks like a budget document or an ordering document, financial yeah. data. Almost everyone is going to enable yep. macros because that's what's there. And then it's saying that it needs to download the data to get the most current thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to do that. Oh. So as, as soon as we can do that, we can see the threats detected. It's now out there running. So I'm going to minimize its window. And what we should see here shortly is the minions get encrypted. As it's doing that, I'm actually going to go over and look at the forensics. Okay. So you can see it's already got encrypted. Oh, no. They're already toast. It's already got the background. Wow. So at this point, most people would burn this box. It's dead. Oh, go go recover. Do what you're going to do. So let's go look at the activities over here. And we'll see that we hit on it. Yeah. Sample right there. So let's go look at what we're actually going to see. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually verify, you know, we know it's bad, so I'm going to start the rollback process, and then I'm going to explain what's happening as the rollback process is going on, okay. and then I'll explain how that works. So what we can see from the console is specifically how many times, so this is a threat we've used, so we've seen it's 20 times, it's been oh, 20 nice. times in the environment. We can see where it ran from, so in this case off the desktop. But more importantly, we can actually see an attack storyline, which is a forensic oh, wow. rep representation of specifically what did the attack do, what processes it did it call. And each one of these processes, what did they actually do from an event standpoint? Wow. So that's one process, but you can see like server, which is the ransomware, mm -hmm. start to affect files called other processes. So you get a forensic 
idea of what happened. Mm -hmm. And the forensics go into raw data where we can see so far it's affected 173 files on the box. It's called 14 different processes. So I can see kind of like the download from the C2 right there. I can see the persistence via the scheduled tasks. So I now know specifically what this thing actually did, nice. right? Yep, yep. But even with a traditional EDR solution, it told me what it did, but my box is still hosed. Mm -hmm. So I got to go re-image the box, recover from backup, right? Right. So if you notice, I did click the rollback command up here, right? Mm -hmm. So if I go to my machine, hey. you'll notice my minions are back. Yes. The only thing that's not been restored is my desktop. Mm -hmm. And technically, the desktop has been restored. The issue with the desktop is it's a cached image. So until I refresh or reissue oh, the command to change okay. it, it won't reflect that. So what I'm going to do is log off, log back on. Okay. And when it logs back on, hey. I've now recovered a completely crypto-locked box. Nice. In a couple seconds, with a click, a single click of a button. That's incredible. So that's how Sentinel One works to do that. It's very, very powerful to do. So the other, only other thing I want to show you mm -hmm. is Deep Visibility, which is our new EDR product that we're coming out. So let's say, as an example, use cases legal comes to you and says, "Hey, look, we found a bunch of proprietary data on Pastebin, which yeah. is a great anonymous egress site, right? So can you please tell me what happened?" Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to look for pastebin.com as an example. I'm going to say, I don't know when that's happened. Give me data in the last 30, you know, in this case, 90 days. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to search. And what I notice right away yeah. is I actually start seeing pastebin.com, and I can actually see this was an encrypted HTTPS session that pastebin wow. deposed. But more importantly, I can also see the process that called it. So in this case, it looks like PowerShell. Mm -hmm called it. And if I look at kind of the DNS, the flags, it looks like it's malicious, right? So yeah. I can click on unique agents and I can see that two machines actually have egressed wow. data now to pastebin.com. That's kind of interesting. I can see this one over here is hit on an alert though. So let's mm -hmm. go see what that alert actually looks like. So if I come in here and go into view threats, wow. okay. I can see this project, project one doc timelines about correct. So let's take a look at that. So if I take a look at that, I can see where it is, project doc, I can mm -hmm. see the hash, but let's look at the raw data report. If I start looking at processes, the first thing I'll notice is some of the command line arguments in this process mm -hmm. are the same command line arguments I saw in the execution. Mm -hmm. So I know this okay. is the right document. So now let's take this hash here and let's see who else has its hash. So I'm going to copy that, go back in here, and instead I'm going to search for hash equals whatever that hash is, right? Right, yeah. And I'm going to set it to, again, timeline, right? Mm -hmm. And let's search. So now I see a bunch of hashes here, but let's look at unique agents. Where How is it spread across my environment? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll notice is there's a third machine that popped up in here. Oh, yeah. That's victim eight. But you notice it's in the high value users group, and it only has one instance of the file. So mm -hmm. let's go take a look at that. So if I go take a look at that one instance of the file, I can actually see that it's on his desktop. He just hasn't opened wow. it yet. But I can also see it came from a 7-zip file. So it was like an archive. So this is like, as you, this example, example to prove, within about two minutes and like three or four clicks, I was mm -hmm. able to solve a data egress issue, an information leakage issue that started mm -hmm. from an encrypted URI post. So again, it's a very powerful tool. So that's kind of a quick summary of mm -hmm. just some of the things that the Sentinel One platform can do. Wonderful. That's incredible. Thank you so much for sitting down and showing this to me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. And that's all the time that we have for today, so be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Access Point. Also make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on HackerArsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.